So it's not discipline and all of that. Very greedy and risks too much. So let's talk about fundamentals. All right. When we talk about fundamentals, what we are saying in essence is news events. Okay. And then let me just jump to this side. Uh, well, whenever we talk about fundamentals, we are talking of we are usually see oh, oh, this yes, news. Right. Yes, the recommended website to view this fundamental is www.investing.com. You know, investing.com. And usually the market is very volatile during this news event. So some traders don't usually trade during this particular news event because the market can move periodically, can move in unpredicted, unpredictable directions. So but let me just explain what fundamental is using this diagram that we have mm -hmm. here. So now I usually love to explain the fundamental that's the news event that affects the forex market using the car and the driver and then all of these scenarios. Now let's say the whole of what is happening here, mm -hmm. the whole of this representation represents an economy. And then we have the key to this economy. diagram. Yes, so the driver now, who is controlling the Go economy, on. is obviously the CBN. That's the CBN governor. Mm -hmm. Now, whenever he apl applies the brakes, he uses the weapon of interest rate. Either he is increasing interest rate or reducing interest mm -hmm. rate that will, that will now affect the growth of, the economy. of this economy. So, whenever he increases interest rate, you know, he wants to seduce people to take out money from that economy and save it in the bank because it's, rational, it's very, very rational and clear. If interest rate is increased, what that means is that you'll be getting more money for saving your money in the bank. That you'll be getting higher returns than before for saving, for keeping your money in the bank because the interest rate has been increased. So, if money was in the economy, it's a way of sucking out that money to reduce yeah, the economic growth. growth. Yes, because and the, the, the aim of every economy is not to move so fast or too slow. Rather, it's to be stable. You understand? So, whenever the brakes are applied, that's by means of increasing interest rate, is to slow down the economy. So, when the economy is too slow, what does the, gov the CBN governor do? He reduces interest rate. That will now discourage people from keeping money in the bank. I will now make them to take out money and put and, 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 mm -hmm. and, and, and invest in profitable ventures that would give them more money. And countries like like China and I think Singapore to be more precise, they operate on Japan, they operate on what is called negative interest rate. That means if you put your money in the bank, it's your money will be debiting than even increasing. So what that does is that it builds the economy, it makes the economy grow faster. In the sense that when you put your money in the bank, instead of you having some uh, interest for keeping your money in the bank, the money is being depleted. So what people do, the wise decision to make. Is to take out that money and invest in something. That's why if you go to countries like Japan, countries like China and the rest, they don't have any mineral resources. But due to the fact that there's enough money in their economy, financing maybe one project, maybe one technological project or the other, you see the economy is booming. And it's one of the greatest economies of the world today. So that's how the brakes can be applied. So now, when we talk about fuel, it's productivity. When they say something, an economy is growing, it's growing. it means that that economy is productive. It has something to offer. You understand? That's why the economy is either uh, the financial assets of that particular economy is either going up or going down. So when we talk about the speed, I'm talking of the rate of economic growth. You understand? So now putting all of this together, the CBN governor, in in other words, is the one that controls whatever happens to the economy or whatever happens to the financial set of that particular economy. You understand? So that is just it. So let's just go to that investing.com. I think that do I have my internet? Now this is investing.com. Maybe much later I'll do that explanation. Yes, I'll do that explanation. So now, most important forex terminologies. You know, mm -hmm. when you are a medical doctor, you have those technical terms that are for mixing people. Mm -hmm. So now that we want to become a forex trader, you need to know those so, technical oh, terms that, oh, uh, that we use in forex, so that when somebody say peep, you know, you understand what the person is talking about. Yeah. So a peep is a measure of price movement in a particular direction, just like a tailor will use a tape, a measuring tape, to measure the distance of from year to year, understand, or of maybe clothes he wants to mm -hmm. sew. In forex, if you want to dis determine the direction that price has moved in a particular direction, what we the tool that we use is called it's a peep measurement too. 
Understand? So now let's talk about lot size. You know, we now understand what a pip is. Mm. Now lot size, this is your desired risks or reward allocated on a particular position or trade. When I say position, I mean I mean trade. Based on what type of lot sizes you use. That means this is this is the, the tool that we use to determine how much we are risking per trade based on our stop loss range. How much we are risking? Yes, we are risking per trade. Or how much we are going to get in because it's a two-way thing. The more they risk the more the potential reward and the more the, the higher the potential loss is too because if you are risking one dollar per pip for example you know that if it's going negative it's still minus one dollar per pip minus one dollar per pip according to the amount of pip it goes all right but if it's going positive plus one dollar per pip so the more the loss size you allocate to a particular trade the higher the risk or the higher the reward that's why i say loss size is your desired risk or reward allocated on a particular position that's perfectly understood. So now, we have different kinds of loss size. We have the mini loss size, we have the micro loss size, we have the macro loss size. So now, loss size are supposed to be used according to your account size. We recommend that if you are to trade professionally. And I recommend that you should use in between 0 0.01 to 0 0.09 if you are using from a $100 account to about $1,000 account. That range, you should, use, you should not use more than 0 0.01 to 0 0.09. What that means is that 0 0.01 in Forex mm. simply means 10 cents. 0 0.01, that's the loss size that we use to determine what we know as 10 cents. To 0 0.09, which is 9 cents. Sorry, mm -hmm. that's 90 cents, right? 90, 90 yes. cents. Now, that's for in between. That's, that's, for that's, mini, between. that's the mini it's side of it. Yeah. Now, macro, micro side of it, we have 0 0.1, which means $1. $1. One dollar, mm -hmm. which is recommended for a one thousand dollar account, to ten thousand dollar, which is zero point zero nine, which is about zero point zero nine is about uh, uh, nine dollars per pip. That means each pip movement is nine dollars that is either adding or moving mm -hmm. back that is removing from your account. So now macro loss size should be used from a ten thousand dollars account to infinity. Right? Oh, this, is, this is one thousand. Yes, that was a mistake. I think it's supposed to be ten thousand dollars to infinity. So you can use from one point zero. One point zero means. I think 1.0 means $10 per pip, you know, to infinity. That means if you had 10 pip now, and you're using 1.0, and each of those your pip is worth uh, $10 per pip, that means the market moved 10 pips against you. Yes. You have lost $100, right? Because it's $10, $10 that will be going. If it moves 10 pips in your favor, you have gained $100. And 10 pips is a very small move that can happen within one minute. Mm -hmm. each market. It can happen within even two minutes. So imagine if you are right most of the time, and two, two minutes you are making... Hundred hundred dollars. That's thirty thousand naira. You know, you know what that means. Uh, yeah, same thing. That we make you can be losing. Yes, that's why I like the way you are, you are, you are getting it. So it's a two-way thing. That's why you have to employ. Uh, 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 what, what do you advise? I advise that you should apply the mm -hmm. allocated risks per trade. That you should be disciplined because if you are using a good risk uh, ratio, what 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 should you be for that? That you should not risk more than one. I will teach you how to calculate risks. Okay. Yes, how to determine the exact lot size you should use. In a particular trade i'll show you how to do that so now let's talk about equity the equity shows the actual balance in your trading account during and after a trade what that simply means is that we have actual balance you understand mm -hmm. that's we have your account balance which shows you the mo amount of money in your trading account that's the money you deposited like Investing. say you have you have one hundred thousand naira. you deposited one hundred thousand naira. that's your actual that's your account that's balance your, your now the account. equity is when you have placed the trade Mm. What is either adding or what is either mm. going? Going, going? Yes, you understand. So that's what the equity is. The difference between them. Yes, the difference. So let me just do a, a illustration so you get used to the system. Now let's now see this whole account. Mm. This is our platform, the MetaTrader, where we use to place our trade. Now, this is this is look at it. It's written here equity mm -hmm. ninety six thousand seven hundred and seventy, right? Mm. It means that. My balance is increasing, right? But it has not. My actual balance that I deposited was ninety six thousand two hundred and yes, that means I've increased by about five hundred and thirty two point eighty one. That's the difference between this. And yeah, this. the difference between this and that. So, but it can still go down because yeah. if the market is still moving. So the equity is just showing you what is happening oh, yeah. in the trade. You understand? That. Yes, but why this one is telling you the actual balance? So when you close these positions, maybe you close these positions. All right, you close your order or they mm. take profit. This your equity will now be exactly like it will now 
become your actual balance. So when, when you close the market, you will not, 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 not become balance. Yes, you will not become your I balance. Understand. So if you were on the loss, you will know that this your balance will reduce. If you are on the profit, you know, yeah. your balance will increase according to your equity. So that's just what it is. So moving forward now, let's talk about the broker. Brokers are like the middlemen that helps you carry out the buying and selling in the market. So we also talk about the account balance. Okay, we have talked about the account balance. Yeah. So broker, they are the middlemen that helps you carry out the buying and selling in the market. Like when you see when I when I say buy euro US dollars, most people are always confused that these things we are it's not a, seeing. It's an, it's an agent. Yes, they are like the middle people. They are like the agents that if you give them like when you when I click whenever I click, let me just. I make, understand what you mean by broker. Yes. Like, I, 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 I I used to buy stock now. Yes, exactly. Mm. So now let's see. You see our buy and sell options here. This it was it's given to us by our broker, which is Think Forex UK. Okay. So whenever I click buy, I'm ordering the broker to place. An order. An order at the current market position. So when I just click buy, it means I've ordered them. Buy. So this thing communicates with them. This platform, this meta trader, communicates with my broker. So if I buy, they buy at where I click, they buy. If I sell, they buy, they sell at where I click, they sell. I don't even understand. Based on my analysis, analysis. that I must have done. So they are the ones that help us carry out our orders in the Forex market. So you, so now, so you, 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 you deal with broker? Yes, I deal with brokers. Mm -hmm. I deal with various brokers, yes. And then I would I also show you, I'll give you my recommended recommended broker because there are many scammy brokers. There are many people that will just open. Um, we're, we're in the world. Yes, Hello. and all of that. So now leverage. Using broker's money to increase position power of your account. When we have leverage of 1 is to 10, 1 is to 20, what that simply means is that because we are retail traders, they offer us what is called leverage. That means an opportunity to take on higher risks than we are particularly allocated to. Mm -hmm. That means you might have a hundred dollars account, for example, you might have a hundred dollar account, but you can use even 1.0 lot size, which is not normally, which is not a, the lot size you are supposed to use, but you have the leverage too. It can be a good thing, it can be a bad thing. Because if you have a hundred dollar account and it moves 10 people, which is very easy, I told you one minute, 10 people can happen. You know you lose and the time whole hundred dollar, you have blown your account. That's happened. Now see, for instance, it's come, where is it now? But it was your risk management that affected you. You understand? So the leverage is a good thing, it's a bad thing. Because now we are only talking about the negative side. What if you had used 1.0, which is bad for your account, but it worked out and went 1,000 pips? You know, you have just turned $100 to over, you have turned $100 to $10,000. That's 36000 to 3.6 million. It's yeah. luck. Right. Yes. So <laughs> that's what it is. So now let's talk about <laughs> stop loss. This is an order. Stop loss is an order to the broker to close a certain position with a loss to avoid further loss. Let's say you had initially speculated. Let's say that you are initially, let's say the, we are at this level. All right, mm -hmm. let me go to maybe something like this. Let's say what happened from year to year, the market went up, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say we are at this level, right? And then we felt that the market will continue in this sell side move and we, we bought, we sell, we sold sell, here. Sold. Yes, and now see, let's say we entered here. For example, and then we place our stop loss maybe above here, like this. Now the market did not go in our expected direction because whenever we are selling, we are we are we are trying to speculate that the market should continue down. But now rather the market went up and hit our stop loss. So it's an order to the broker because as it is going, according to the loss size that we use, you'll be reading minus 10, minus 20, minus 30, 10, you know, like that. You understand? So if we keep our stop loss here, it's an order to the broker that. We have accepted to close with the loss at, at this point. point. You understand? Because we expected this market to go down, but it's not going down. So rather than we letting it to continue all this minus in the, as it's going in our negative forward direction, it will be reading minus, right? So either for us to let it continue in this minus, that means we don't have a stop loss, which will now blow our account. But since we have determined that if it goes this bad, we should close our yeah. order here with the loss. We accept that we are wrong. Wait, I thought it's when it's going up that we are, we are making profit. We can make profit in both directions. If it's going down, if as far as oh, you, okay, you speculated right, as far as you said that it was going down based on your analysis, yes. everything is according to your analysis. As far as you speculated that based on your analysis is going to go up, you will be right. So let me just go back to what we are saying. So that's what a stop loss is. Now, when we talk about stop loss range, the stop loss range is the distance the market can go negative of your desired or expected direction. What I simply mean is just what I just explained now. 
Now, we expected that the market should go down, but the market yeah. went negative. So, it's the extent. So, from here, your entry, your point of entry to where you place your stop loss is what is called stop loss range. Okay. From your entry to where you place your stop loss is what is called stop loss range. So, now, let's still move forward. Now, what is take profit or book profit? When I say book profit, is to... It's a, this is an order to the broker to close a certain position with profit. Now, for example... Okay. Let's say we were, we were kind of right. We had entered here for a buy. That means whenever we enter for a buy, we are expecting that the market should go what, up. Right? Now, we are, this is our entry. Mm -hmm. This location, this, where you see this, my red line, mm -hmm. 1.25753 was our entry. And then we had placed our stop loss below, which is 1.25230. You understand? And we speculated the market will go up. Because oh. whenever your, your stop loss is below, it's obvious that your expected direction was upward, oh. right? Whenever your stop loss is above, it's obvious that your expected direction was below. Because your stop loss determines the negative direction. That's the range. Your stop loss range is, in, is where the market is expected to go wrong, right? So now, our take profit, is, which is what I'm expecting to, which I'm, I'm about to explain, is that is the distance from your entry to where you have you had placed you had you had said that the market should book profit. That mm. if it's going upward, that's the direction you expected, or mm. downward, the direction you expected. That's so far as you speculated that it was going to go up oh. before it went up. If it's going upward, it will be reading positive for you. So your take profit now is that it's a position at let's say one point two five 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 five. You understand? That the broker is expected to close your position, your order with profit. So that in a scenario like this, that the market reach this point and started going down and even came and hit your stop loss you will not be affected because you have already closed your order you have no, already no, booked no, profit, no, profit at the end of the day so you will lose nothing so according to a strategy we are going to show you we will expect that you would be you you would have an entry you have a stop loss that's negative of direction and you have positive of direction so to what so they take profit there is to what extent will you want to allow this trade you want to hold to this trade to go yes basically that's what your the take profit is. So now, I, I already talked about mm. this. So it takes stop loss range. This is the distance in pips. It's in pips mm. from entry to where the broker is expected to close your position with a loss. Uh, yeah. So take profit also is in pips. This is the distance in pips from entry to where the broker is expected to book profit or loss. All right. So close profit or loss. You should close profit or loss sugar. Okay. It's close profit. profit. Yes. To mm. close position with profit alone. That's take profit. Let me just do one small explanation. This is the tool that we use in Forex to calculate pips. This very tool or meta trade out. Now, our our stop loss in pips, that's our stop loss range from our entry. Look at I took my we expected we speculated the market was going up, right? Mm. And then this is my entry. That's from where I entered the market. Alright. So now the stop loss, sorry, you click and drag. I want to calculate the that's in pips, what my stop loss range is. So I'll drag down. To where I have this red line, mm -hmm. and it's going to tell me how. If you, see, if you look well, you see what is that thing that figure that is changing. You see, for five two four, have you seen it? Mm -hmm. That figure mm -hmm. four nine five four nine five two four simply means 52 pips. So we are taking the last one there, we are making it it's more like a decimal 52.4. Okay. Whenever it's five two four, we are talking of 52.4. So our take profit range now it's upward. So it is 183.5. Mm -hmm. You understand? So the distance between our entry to where we determine to close with the loss is about 52.4. And the distance where we want to close with the with profit is about 183.5, right? This is how you can you can you can you use to do your risk reward. You would notice that if we lose, we are losing lesser because we are only losing, we are only losing. 52 pips, right? If we win, we are winning about 100 and something pips. That will now be determined by the loss size we use. Yes. That what 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 it will be? What we our actual loss will now be determined by the loss size we use. Let's say we took the same trade at the exact exactly the same entry. Me, I use 0 0.01, which is 10 cent per pip, mm. right? If it goes in this direction up to this uh, 100 pips, you know how much I will get. That's 10 cent times 100. Right now, if it goes unexpected of my direction, 10 cent minus 52. 
So if you use one dollar per pip, we know you have made about hundred and eighty something dollars, right? If you use, if you lose, let's like say this trade now, you know, going in our expected direction mm. and hit our stop loss, you know, you have lost about fifty two dollars because you used the loss size you used was one dollar per pip. Some other person may use ten dollar per pip. So it's the same trade though, but different loss size. So it's different amount you lose or different amount based on, yeah. So that's just what it is. Hmm. So now, let's talk about. Uh, so always ensure, yes, always ensure that your that your stop loss to take profit should always be at least one is to two, at least one is to two, so that risk reward can work in your favor mm -hmm. at the end of the day. So our entry now is the exact price the broker should buy or sell particular financial mm -hmm. assets. It's just what I've explained, but let me just quickly go back to it for reference purposes. This is our entry. Mm -hmm. Where you are, maybe you are put the pending order no, when, no, the, no, when the market comes, you, you buy. Yes, or when, let's say that you, say. you did the order when the market was just moving you close buy, to okay. this place, you just clicked it. That means instant execution. But there are some times that the market may be down here and you want the market to buy when it gets here, and you may not be around. So you just come to that position where you want the market to buy, which is 1.25753. Then you click on this new order. You understand? You determine the loss size you want to use. I will teach you how to calculate loss size to use. Wow. You understand? That's what you know. <laughs> I'll teach you how to calculate loss size to use. Oh! <laughs> I'll teach you how to calculate loss size to use. And then whenever you you leave this 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 place here at market execution and you click buy, that means you want the market, let's say the market was here. You mm. want it to buy here immediately. If the market was here, you want it to buy yeah, exactly yeah, here. Yeah, now, if you want to do a pending order, maybe you are, you are, you are guessing that you will not be around when the market mm. will get to this. 1.25753. You understand? You will do what is called pending order. That means okay. order that is pending. Now, and that pending order, because it's a, a booth, it should be a buy stop. Buy stop? Yes. When you got it, you buy. Yes, you do buy and, and you, you do, you know, your, your order will be triggered. That means the order that you have placed that, okay, this is your entry, this is where your stop loss will be, will now be open. Your order will be opened at this price. So now you now tell you at what price do you want this your pending order? That order that has not been triggered yet to be. I will now write this price 1.1.25230. 1 I don't know if you understand. Yeah, and I'll play. So whenever the market gets to 1.230, it takes it, it, it puts it, it plays me now. But I think that it can start to be going down. It won't go. It won't go yes, then, then nobody lose. It's just it okay. goes. That means it's even good self because it does not. It not come to your order. Uh, uh, and uh, are you sure that you won't, you won't go below that? That how are you sure that it, nobody can determine that. But if you have a strategy, mm. sometimes you'll be correct, sometimes you'll be wrong. That's okay. just what it is. So now there's another kind of order, another buy, buy another order mm -hmm. that's called buy limit, because you are a disciplined trader, and let's say the market went up to this place. Mm. I don't know if you understand. And you missed this move. Okay. But your your, your law was that you want to enter at 1.25753. Mm -hmm. What you can do is that you can place a buy limit here, down here. So that if the market should retrace, because we know as far as that the market does not move in, it, in one direction like this. It rather move up. You see, this even this upward movement here, it moved up, it came down a little bit, it moved up. Came down a little bit. He moved up. Came down. You see, okay. so because we know that market can always it has a potency of coming down, well, going up. and you are determining to enter at one point two five seven five three. What you can do is that you can put a buy limit order here. That buy limit order is that the market has passed this one point two five seven five three. It has mm. passed it, but you are, you are you are you feel that the market will retrace back to this place, so that it can trigger you into that trade before going up. So what you simply do if the market has passed your expected entry is to simply come to your new order and then instead of putting a penny, penny you remember buy stop now was for when the market has not gotten there. Mm -hmm. But now this buy limit is when the market has passed, you expect that the market will retrace and trigger you to that trade mm -hmm. before continuing up. I don't even understand. Mm -hmm. So that's why you, when you put a buy limit, sorry, a buy limit, not a buy stop. So the opposite of what I just said now, it's, it's, it's what, what is meant by sell stop Sell limit. Yeah, yeah, you understand? I don't see. Okay, can you just explain? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's leave that because uh, it's not something I expect you to get. No. God. Yes, it's something that as you it's we like continually repeat, you would surely understand and you find it easy. So I, I, did, I think I know this one now. So you see? I didn't know this was now. Uh, you, no, you will get it. It's obviously recorded, so I will send the video to you and all the students later.
that are watching what we are doing. So these are broker's charges. Spreads are basically broker's charges based on market condition and currency pair. So this is how the brokers... Many people will be thinking that how does broker make money? People feel that the broker make, makes money from our losses, but that's not true. The brokers mm -hmm. rather make money from charges, commissions, all those taxes yes. and the rest that you pay during the trade and outside the trade. So now currency pairing and what you need to know. The first market is traded in pairs. Unlike the stocks that we may have, stocks of Apple, stocks of MXN, and all of that. Forex is rather is traded in pairs. So you are trading one country's financial asset against another. So it is traded in pairs. You are trading the strength and weakness of another country, of, another country, of various countries. So they are traded usually in, 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 two, in, in, in pair. Now we have different pairs. We have Euro US dollars, we have AUD card, and a host of many others. So that's what I mean by pairing. So now let's see. An example is it's 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 speculating on two wrestlers fighting wrestling. And uh, another way you can understand for us is it, I want to just make a small mm -hmm. explanation there. You see, two people are fighting, let's say John Cena and Rick Ross or whatever. <laughs> yes, and then Rick Ross now is Euro US dollars. John Cena is USD JPY. Sorry, it's USD. That's US dollars. When John Cena is beating this one, you know that okay, because Rick Ross is Euro now and John Cena is US. Mm -hmm. Whenever Rick Ross is beating uh, John Cena, you know that the market should be going up because Euro is doing better than US dollar. Mm -hmm. But whenever US dollar still the same pair, I'm not showing you how it appears on the mm -hmm. chart. Whenever you, uh, the other person is beating, you, that's mm -hmm. US dollars is beating Euro. Euro, you see that that, that chart, which is our basic indicator, will start going down. Okay, no. So if we have a chart open for Euro US dollars, for example, let's say we, had, we have this chart. Let's say we have this chart. This chart now is GBP US dollars. That means it's the, we are trading the GBP economy against the United States okay. economy. So whenever you see this market moving upward, mm. telling you that GBP is doing well. But well, when you see Come from down. this point, it starts going down. It means it's just indicating, it's representing that the US dollars is doing better as of this whole time. You understand? If now GBP now picked up, US beat them, just like that. So it's an indication of price movement. This chart that we so see. GBP. Yes, this is GBP. Look at how I know from up here. Well, these are the day now. No, these are others. If I want to bring so, out another one, I'll just click and drag here. It brings okay. out the chart for that one. So, but for this analysis. scenario, it's, it's just the GBP we are doing analysis on. And then while this, what we have here, this, this is called price scales. So now we can see that at this point, at this point where we see 1.27, mm. the secret there is that as of this point, where we see at as this this point we are looking at now, where my mouse is, it's telling us the dates. It was on 2019, the 06 of 25, at around at around 8 o'clock. You see all the details are here. Telling you that at as of this time, even though you check Google, the price of GBP to United States dollars was about one GBP is equals to 1.27555 whatever. Yeah. GBP. At that particular time. Yes, at that particular time. So one dollar was about one point two seven. Sorry, one GBP was one point two seven dollars. So that time, but you know GBP is obviously higher than dollars. Mm. So one GBP was around one point two. As of this date that you saw that came out here, this date that came out when I pointed the candle, mm. it comes out when I point the candle. So you see, telling me that two thousand and nineteen, at at about last month. That was six mm -hmm. six months, right? June twenty fifth, twenty fifth of June of last oh, yes, twenty fifth of June at about eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. One GBP was worth mm -hmm. one point two dollars. You understand? But currently, as I speak to you now, this is where market is. As I speak to you today, this is where market is. That's mm -hmm. you know that I check Google now, you'll see what I mean. The price of one GBP. Because that's to tell you that the American economy is doing well as we speak, because it is going down. down. Yes. So now, see where the price is. It's here at one point. That means one GBP is now worth one point two four five. Well, that's gone down. That's gone down, obviously, right? It's From one point two seven, that's gone down to. So what if you had known? This is billions for some people. What if you had known that this thing will go down, go down just... and you just swap your money and buy buy, buy GBP? Right? No, you buy US dollars. Right? So whenever the market is going down and you click sell, 
mm. you are buying US dollars. That means for this currency pair that we have here, which is GBP US dollars, you can either buy or sell. Or sell. Whenever you buy, you are speculating that the GBP wants to do better. Very, very important. Whenever you sell, you are, you are speculating that USD wants to do mm. better. better. So if you had sold at this point, knowing that's giving you analysis and other things that you use to determine where price will go, that strategy, and the market went down, you you forecasted before this thing happened that the G, the, the GBP will lose value, value. while the USD will gain value. because of this our chart. That we're looking but going down is losing, you know, losing. Go, going down is telling you that GBP is losing strength, but you can still make money from the fall of a particular currency. That's from mm-hmm. the weakness of a particular currency Policy. against another. Do you understand? So when GBP is losing, whenever you click sell, you are buying the opposing currency. The opposing currency. Now. Yes. So we have GBP, which is the base currency. That's the actual currency of this chart. This chart is indicating everything about GBP. This chart is showing you GBP movement over time. Right? Then we have USD, which is the subsidiary pair. That's the subsidiary currency. This chart is telling you the strength and weakness of USD in relation to what? Uh, sorry, the strength and weakness of GBP in relation to USD. You understand? So as this thing was going up, it was telling you that GBP was strengthening. As it is going down, down here, it's yeah, telling you that yeah. USD is strengthening, which means that GBP is going down because this chart is indicating GBP alone. So you but in relation to USD. USD. Yes. So as you see it going up, telling you that GBP is going yeah, is doing well. Yeah. Now that it is going down, it's telling you that US dollars is now beating GBP, right? So in this scenario, now, what, what can you say if, if you are using GBP? Yes, if you are trading this pair, mm-hmm. right, and you sold at this point, you will be in profit by now. At this point? At this point, where yeah, you will be in profit, yeah. But if you had bought here, mm. you will be at loss. Because it, it's going down? Yes, it's going down. But if you had bought for this short movement upward here, you have been in profit. When you bought here, yeah, bought here now. No, if you bought down here, yeah, yeah. because you bought down, you bought it's low. cheaper. Yeah. When you're going you're going up. Up. Understand? So because but, you are using a uh, because you are using GBP mm-hmm. now in this scenario. So if you are using a uh, USD, yeah, you will be the opposite. Now, but there's no pair called USD GBP. There's no pair like that. But let's say if we had a pair USD GBP. Now, whatever is happening, this this if we had a pair that is called USD uh, USD GBP. The, this chart will be the opposite of it. I understand you now. It will be the opposite of this. So, the, in other words, when we sold here... That is when it's vice versa. Yes. It's not when, 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 when GBP is here. Yes. And you, yes, yes, you say it's going down. Yes, it's going down. But under that chart of USD, GBP is going up. Oh. So that means you, like, you are still buying in any, in any way you are. I you see it. So if you are, because of this pair, GBP, USD, you press buy. That means you are, you are so speculating you that you should buy go. A, a buy what you want is done. And yeah, sell when it's up. up. Then when you press sell, it's still a buy. Mm. But it's for the other currency now. That's <laughs> not the base. The base is the one by the left. Now, if I want to pronounce this pair that we have here, I will say GBP USD. So the one I pronounce first is the base currency. That's just what it is. Oh, this is, this is another one now. Yes, another one. AUD card. We have various currency pairs. So now let's talk about risk management rule. Okay, let's talk about this another day. Let's stop here. For understanding.